Good afternoon, everyone. So we're talking about Smart BCH today, which is going to be, in my humble opinion, the next big DeFi platform. Welcome, uh, Fuego, who is our uh, special guest today. Of uh, Okay, so I'll, I'll take those 100s to mean that you're hearing me. Thanks, Pierre Pierre. Thanks, Lance. So, yeah, just wanted to say a big, big welcome to Fuego. Uh, who is uh, joining us today as a speaker, our special guest, not our only guest, but our special, special guest. So, uh, Fuego, how are you doing today? Hi, man. Thank you for having me. I'm, it's my uh, pleasure. I'm fine. How are you? Uh, doing great. Doing great. So much stuff going on in the BCH space. How, how are you feeling about the whole smart BCH thing? Well... Uh, me personally, I, yeah, I think it's uh, it's really amazing what we're doing here on uh, smart BCA. There's so many new projects coming, and uh, you know a lot of uh, projects doing very well. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm happy with the progress. Excellent, excellent. So you have a bunch of different. Um, so thanks to Bcashy for letting me know that uh, you guys can hear me. So Fuego, you have a bunch of. Um, different uh, projects right can you t can you tell yeah, us about yeah. some of the pro things you're building well first of all uh, obviously uh, most people probably know me from uh, from the cash cats sub 20 token uh, mm -hmm. we we launched that pretty uh, pretty uh, it's uh, instantly at the same time when uh, smart bch launched and after that, we uh, I got together with uh, Jay from uh, SmartScan, and uh, my other partner Tyne. Uh, he's uh, he's our designer, and uh, yeah, we're we're building an NFT marketplace on uh, on Smart PCH it's called Oasis dot Cash. And uh, so far, it has been doing uh, pretty good. Yeah. Out outstanding. So I saw you guys uh, launched. Some um, so, uh, some set of of NFTs already, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Cash Cats NFTs. Yeah, for sure. Cool, cool. So, and those already sold out. Is that right? No, 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 no. We had uh, we had uh, this tool built in into uh, Oasis. It was called uh, Cats for Cats. So basically, what the tool uh, allowed you to do was uh, you could trade in your your uh, cash cat sub twenty tokens, and you get a cash cat NFT in return for your uh, sub twenty cash cats. And uh, oh. yeah, that uh, well, that, that was amazing to see. Like the thing that sold out in forty five minutes, I believe. So it was a great success, I guess. <laughs> wow! Yeah, I'd say, I'd call that a great success. So. Are the NFTs like, um, like I, 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 I mean, I generally know what an NFT is, but still, I'm, I'm, I consider myself kind of an NFT newbie a little bit. So, mm -hmm. are the NFTs you sold, or are they kind of like Crypto Kitties or the Punks thing, where they're all variations on a single theme? Yeah, I would say they're probably more like uh, Crypto Punks than more than uh, Crypto Kitties. So, what it is is actually, uh, it's a uh, we uh, designed these cats, but we didn't design them there one by one, obviously. What we did was we designed uh, all kinds of attributes, all kinds of backgrounds, all kinds of uh, accessoires for these cats. And uh, after that, what we did was we ran a script through it, and the script uh, randomly generated like 10,000 NFTs of these cats. So they would all look a little bit different than uh, one another, but it's part of the same uh, same set. All uh, we had a small little problem with uh, generation of these cats that we found out uh, afterwards. Unfortunately, there were some duplicates in between the set, so uh, we had to close the the auctions. Because we were supposed to auction this whole week on Oasis, these uh, cash cats. But, uh, yeah, we paused it for a few days. But, yeah, it's uh, more of a collectible, sort of like the CryptoPunks, you know. They have different attributes. They have different uh, 
different backgrounds. Crypto kitties, I don't believe they really have much attributes, just different colors and things. But yeah, the cash cats, I think they look cool. They do good. I've seen a lot of people on uh, Twitter. I've seen a lot of people on uh, Telegram also using these cats as their uh, profile picture. So um, yeah, I'm happy to see that. That's super cool. So for the builders uh, who are listening today, um, you know, how, how was that experience? Like, what did it take to launch your own, uh, you know, NFT series? Are there tools for that that are open source? Or did you basically have to build all your own tools? Uh, well, the, the thing with uh, how we did it was... Uh, we did the NFT series, but we were also building the whole platform around it. So there were multiple contracts that uh, my partner Jay had to uh, had to develop and uh, launch. But yeah, there are open source contracts for uh, NFT series. Uh, Oasis, uh, the decentralized exchange contract, is not open source, and uh, our contracts are uh, built from scratch. But yeah, for NFT series, you know, people that want to create uh, different kind of NFTs and they want to launch them on a platform like uh, Oasis, for example, for uh, for auctioning, for selling, for trading. Yeah, there is definitely uh, open source tools for these. Cool, cool. So what's next for Oasis? Um, you know, and I, hey, I just want to say anybody, this is not precisely an interview. This is a Twitter space. So. Anybody should feel free to join in any time. Uh, I've got Purely Peer here as a speaker, wonderful community member, uh, and I've been sending some other uh, invitations to speak. You know, so anybody can uh, you know join in um, and ask questions and whatnot. Thank so, you guys for joining, by the way. Yeah, it's awesome. We've got a pretty good group here. I think we've got I see more. A than... lot of people here. Yeah. Um, so what what's what's the next steps like for um, Oasis? Uh, you know, it's when's, when when am I going to be able to sell some NFTs on your on your marketplace? <laughs> <laughs> well, the the plan was to launch uh, users listings, so uh, regular users that want to uh, sell their NFT. The plan for uh, opening that up was uh, about three four weeks after launch, but. You know, with launching a new platform, there always come some some difficulties, some troubles you overlook before you launch it. Then after you launch them, you find out what they are. You know, you need to debug some things. You need to work on some things. So we have a small delay, but uh, I don't think it will be too bad. I hope we can launch it somewhere, maybe before the end of the month, end of the month, probably early December, somewhere like that, definitely. But yeah, we're working as hard as we can. We try to launch it, yeah, as soon as possible. So, cool. So maybe some uh, Christmas uh, themed NFTs uh, would be would be you know maybe people w would be well served to uh, start thinking about uh, those so they can be uh, ready in time to sell on Oasis.cash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Christmas center of these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. So, also, yeah. I just want to bring up some other uh, related topics. Um, there was a really interesting uh, NFT thread uh, recently by Chris Cantino, who uh, you know I can't uh, claim is uh, really a member our community although he's certainly uh more than welcome i'm not sure i think he's a he's a partner in a venture capital firm or something but um yeah i mean some of the interesting things about nfts uh that people are going to be able to do on oasis.cash on smart bch you know we can have uh like infinite royalties for artists right is that going to be possible with oasis.cash uh yeah we hope to build that too and uh, also, um, we're really focused on uh, making uh, Oasis like the most uh, user-friendly 
NFT marketplace platform for anyone because it, right now it's kind of a, a hassle to launch an NFT series or even to mint one. I mean, uh, you, you got to know what you what you what you have to do, right? But we really want to put them tools out out there for everyone to use, like to mint your own NFT. So simple, so easy that everyone can start doing it. And I mean. Uh, the gas fees are so low on smart BCH. You you can neglect them altogether, and there's no uh, front running risk on auctions. We have three types of auctions implemented in in our platform, like the English uh, auctions, the Dutch auctions. Some of the guys, some of the listeners that have participated in uh, in these auctions, they're all really cool, really fun. Uh, yeah, we just want. Uh, this platform to be for everyone. Cool, cool. That's awesome. So what what got you excited about NFTs in the first place? You know, because like I look at Smart BCH and I'm like, wow, I can build anything on here that you see on like ETH or, or Binance chain, yeah, you know, exactly. right? Because I mean, the possibilities are, are limitless. So Jim, why... Yeah, EVM, right. Yeah, Ethereum Virtual Machine, for those who are not aware. Yeah, so basically, uh, Smart PCH is like a, a copy of the code behind uh, Ethereum. It's not a copy of the ledger, but it's a copy of the code with optimizations, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, optimized uh, Ethereum Virtual Machine. Yeah. So uh, what led you to uh, say, hey, I think we need an NFT marketplace? Well, um, personally, uh, I think NFTs are really awesome. But uh, the thing that excited me the most was uh, not the NFTs per se, but more the the exchange itself. I'm really a fanatic about uh, decentralized exchanges, decentralized finance. I'm a regular DeFi user. I uh, trade cryptocurrency almost every day. I mean, I think the, the whole uh, beauty of uh, being able to trade with anyone uh your nfts your tokens your crypto for stables whatever without any permission from anybody i think that's just amazing so i was really excited about uh the exchange itself you know the place where the trade happens mm, yeah yeah i mean i think that's a natural um place to go i mean that's what if you look at the, all of crypto like most business models are either mining or uh, exchange, right? Mm -hmm. I, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of wondering, like, what's 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 the next one, the next big one, you know? Yeah, NFTs have been pretty, uh, doing pretty good. Well, actually, they've done <laughs> amazing <laughs> so far. Yeah. Uh, uh, the gaming is uh, is coming up. It's doing better and better. So I heard, uh, you know, the blockchain games and things. I think uh, NFTs and uh, Blockchain gaming, they uh, they will probably uh, be next, and they will probably uh, be more uh, uh, integrated with each other. Hmm. I, have a, I have a question. Like, do you actually see your company going into the gaming sector with uh, your NFTs um, on the gaming as well? Uh, not not in the gaming sector itself, but let's say there are games who uh, have uh, in-game items that they want to uh, tokenize into an NFT. Well, they can uh, definitely use our platform to uh, to have the marketplace for it. I mean, when I was young, I used to play a lot of uh, MMO RPGs. Like uh, <laughs> I used to play RuneScape when I was little. Uh, I had some friends who played World of Warcraft. You know, uh, I played a lot of FIFA. I played a lot of uh, GTA. And uh, in these games, there were these items. You know, I remember when I was on RuneScape, if you wanted to make some money on RuneScape, you probably had to uh, kill some cows or something, you know, collect uh, the cow hide or whatsoever, and then you would get money for it. But I can see, uh, what, what I can see happening is like, uh, these different economies between games like uh, they can come together and uh, really uh, trade items against each other so you, you can really get sort of a, the value out of it uh, 
you know, what's uh, this item worth against this item on this other game? I, I think I see that something like that happening. And yeah, I would love to work on, uh, on things like that. Cool, cool. Thanks for jumping in uh, with your question there, Extra Crypto. Um, if anybody else wants to jump in, they're super welcome uh, anytime. Sure. Uh, this is Eric from Purely Peer. Um, to the Hi, top. Oh, hey, Fugo. Thanks, uh, thanks for the awesome platform. I did participate in a couple of auctions. Uh, really fun experience. I definitely recommend it to everyone. Awesome. Um, and uh, thanks for mentioning those different types of auctions. Uh, I have a question about the timeline. You did mention that uh, soon you will be opening it uh, for users to, to sell their own tokens, uh, whatever they already have. But I'm more curious for the builders. Uh, what is your timeline to open up your platform for launching uh, custom series and collections? Uh, I know it's it's difficult to estimate with all the development going on, but uh, do you have an idea whether it's uh, you know weeks, months away or... Approximately. No, I, 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 I think, think personally, personally it won't be more than a month. But it's hard to give a, a rough estimate when we will launch, uh, especially since we're only three guys uh, doing this. Uh, but me and the devs, yeah, we've been working like 16 hours a day or 12 hours a day for, for the past uh, month and a half building this thing. We're hoping to launch it as soon as possible. And uh, the model that we built with Oasis is uh, once we launch it, you know, it will be a decentralized exchange. It won't be that somebody needs to come into my DMs on Telegram. Oh, please, can you list this? Can you list that? You can literally just list your NFT on our platform. It will be uh, there. It can show up. Other persons can bid on it. Uh, and yeah, we hope to you know, to launch it as soon as possible and have everyone trading all the NFTs that they want as soon as possible. Would I be able to do anything? Would I be able to do anything like a NFT uh, video or would it just be pictures or what, what would I be able to do? Um, I'm not sure about videos yet, but it's definitely something we will implement. And uh, we're also wanting to implement uh, audio, uh, video, pictures, you know, everything NFT. And just to follow up, domain domain names. Names. just to follow up question, um, what I'm particularly curious is about the collections, just like you had, you know, cash cats with, uh, let's say, a limited 10,000 mm -hmm. uh, unique cats. Um, will you be opening that type of generation of collections to public soon as well? Um, like you mean generating 10,000 10, new ones? Yeah, like for instance, uh, because I looked uh, on GitHub uh, to the contract, I think you were making it public, uh, how the cash cats are generated. And uh, so it all boils down to a bunch of scripts and uh, a bunch of folders with uh, images that uh, are the, you know, the generators of the different attributes. Um, so using that, we have a unique opportunity to build an online interface where someone uploads a bunch of, you know, uh, traits, different of attributes, yeah. and, and, and manages to define that, all right, I want a collection of 5,000 of these. And, you know, they can quickly preview what, what they are getting, and boom, they, they can launch an entire collection. Um, so I'm wondering if that's somewhere on your timeline. I understand that, that, that that's a little more complex to build. Yeah, yeah it, 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 it is a little, a little bit, bit more, more complex. complex. We firstly, our main priorities are like the basic simple tools to uh, mint your own NFT and have it launched on uh, on this new chain. Uh, but yeah, the more the more complex uh, things, you know, we we have it somewhere down the line. But I, I cannot really make a promise from for uh, when we will launch these services. But yeah, it's definitely something that we would like to do. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, this uh, NFT thread um, from yesterday, I think, is also interesting. Some of the ideas Chris Cantino shared, like uh, you can use it, you can tokenize an NFT, right? So it's like you go from fungible tokens, uh, you know, to non-fungible, and then you take the non-fungible back to fungible. It's kind of funny how 
in the crypto space, everything seems to just always be going in a loop, right? Because also people will buy like uh, Flex USD and then uh, they'll they'll hold that to get more Flex USD, and then in some of these places you get paid and then you restake or you like uh, I saw this video um, uh, of something in the Terra ecosystem that you you loop the staking or something. I, I, I haven't gone, I haven't understood it yet. No, oh, I haven't heard that one yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, the possibilities, uh, they are endless. I mean, uh, it's really, you know, what's the ceiling of your creativity? That's what you can build properly. <laughs> yeah. So do you, what, what do you think like the, the, in crypto, like I've, I've been in crypto for a long time and for me, it's always been, the question of how do we connect crypto with real life, with real value in the real world, you know? And I'm all, and I, I keep seeing crypto going off in like, like um, almost farther away from the real world sometimes. Like even this whole NFT thing is kind of part of that because it's all about this digital art that's like on IPFS, you know? And yeah. do you, do you think it's okay for crypto to just kind of go off and create its own metaverse or or whatever, or do you think we need to loop yes. it back around to the real world somehow? Uh, yes, I think it's a great thing. Uh, you know, uh, the thing is, uh, a lot of people uh, in the early days was all about adoption. You know, having merchant adoption, being able to spend your crypto in a store, and also, it's also now about that, but we're really uh, discovering the possibilities of crypto right now uh, more than ever with the DeFi, with uh, with uh, decentralized exchanges and all these things. And I think uh, an important thing that a lot of people in the BCH community might uh, forget is that it's not only peer-to-peer -peer, uh, electronic cash, but it's also programmable money. I mean, you can run smart contracts on these things. You can do all kinds of things with this uh, with this new technology. So, I personally, I think it's only natural that it moves, you know, more to a digital world, to a, what they would call it a metaverse or something. But yeah, I'm really excited about DeFi. Uh, the way I see it is like, okay, you have the BCA's main chain, which is, uh, you know, pure digital peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. And it's good for uh, for three things mainly. It's good for sending money, it's good for receiving money, and it's good for uh, saving money. And then you have uh, this new side chain called Smart BCH, where you can do also all of that, but now you can also do advanced uh, financial services, you know, borrowing, lending, uh, having different kind of smart contracts, yield farming, swapping, you name it. So, yeah, I think it's only natural that it moves more towards a new uh, digital uh, playing field like Web3. I think Web3 will be very, very big. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it pays It pays well. It pays so good. Like, if you are a Web3 user, I've, I've seen so many people, like, they got rich of airdrops. I mean, people getting fifty thousand dollars airdrop to their address just for being a user in Web three. That's that's insane to think about. It really is like this uh, ENS airdrop, uh, the Ethereum name service, or like the I think was it the Sushi Swap one? I forget which one was the. There was a swap one too, or Uniswap was Uniswap. Uniswap, like, yeah. yeah I mean. Like sometimes at me as a like a BCH builder and I'm like, you know, I'm over here like I want to change the world and stuff. And I'm like, damn, why am I struggling so hard? I should just sit back, you know, put up my feet, have a beer and collect all these damn airdrops. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the fun thing with the airdrops is you don't know in advance if they will be worth something or not. You just have to keep them. Yeah, yeah. So for, you have to, for people also, who... You have to be at the right time, at the right place. I mean, not every airdrop is worth $50,000. That's true. Although one strategy is to be everywhere all the time. <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, <sure>. law of <laughs> averages. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
But for those who aren't aware, so I'll read the definition of Web3 off of Wikipedia. So Web3, also known as Web3.0, is an idea for a version of the internet that is decentralized and based on public blockchains. So this is actually a relatively recent concept, um, and there's, it's getting some investment from uh, technologists and uh, VC funds and whatnot. And I kind of like it. So basically, with that being said, like, do y'all ever see where we may go into um, a future to where we actually have homes that are like non fungible to where like similar to what we have right now, but we have them also showing on the virtual world as well, where we can actually do a virtual tour inside of a home if we move it from one country to another, or maybe even from one state to another state. But we don't want to actually travel for that. We can actually go do a virtual tour inside of the home and actually have it like, okay, that's an NFT. I mean, that's a non-fungible home. So let me just purchase that. Do you think the market will ever go into that route as well? Um, well, I hope not. <laughs> I hope not. That's not really something that I'm looking forward to. But, you know, yeah, it can happen. I mean, uh, if you see Mark Zuckerberg, who's launching like, uh, what's it called, Meta? He's planning to build like this whole digital universe where people just put on their uh, their virtual reality glasses, you know, and they go uh, they go ins inside this uh, digital world and live there. I mean, I'm excited about Web three, but I'm not really excited about uh, fake life, so to say. So yeah, I hope not. I hope we don't go that route. But it will, you you probably will have something like that. That you can uh, just put on some virtual reality glasses uh, on you, and you'll be at work with your co with your colleagues. Yeah, I, I like my reality too. You know, like I sometimes like to go out into the forest for a hike and just remember like what reality is. <laughs> it's the best. But I, but yeah, but I, I, I like I like this idea of. Um, of like an NFT, and this is another idea from Chris Cantino's thread, uh, token gated unlocks. I, I think what it, what he means by this is like you have an NFT and it opens a lock in the real world, you know? And so this whole idea of like uh, one house could be one NFT, you know, whoever holds the NFT is the owner and maybe it also unlocks the house. And I think that's that also I connect that with uh, the work of Hernando de Soto the economist, the Peruvian economist, in uh, re examining why capitalism has worked in the developed world, but not in the uh, developing world. And really, uh, the foundation of it is property registries, uh, you know, ledgers, ledgers for keeping track of who owns what property. And I think this whole NFT thing intersects there because governments d do a crap job, especially in the developing world. So if we could get property registries, these people could register their property. They could enter uh, an, a, an era of greater prosperity, and maybe NFTs have a role to play there. Yeah, I think I think that's a very good uh, use case for NFTs. So uh, to re to register a property, to uh, you know, uh, basically be able to prove that you own a thing. Uh, I think the main use case will be uh, will be exactly that, and uh, being a, being in a digital home and these sort of things. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that will really happen. Obviously, people will only uh, do the things they like with this. It's it's free to use. It's uh, easy to use. And it will naturally flow into the to the, to the things uh, people like for using these things. And I don't think people would want to uh, to to live in a in a digital house or something. I mean, if if that was the case, then Second Life would still be played right now, and it's not really uh, being played at the moment because Second Life was was uh, I think a concept like that it was a it was a game in the early two thousands. Where you where you could buy a piece of land, you could build your house and things. But, you know, it's fun for a bit, but people are not going to live like that. So yeah, definitely for approving uh, ownership of things, you know, pro having an NFT so you can open your house or whatever. But also for things like uh, concert tickets. I mean, uh, 
there's uh, so much fraud going on with uh, concert tickets. And for example, people uh, buying uh, concert tickets that are uh, duplicated or fake or whatsoever. It would it would be much more convenient if you could buy a, a concert ticket to let's say uh, I don't know a Kanye West concert or something, and you you would buy it off uh, from somebody else without any middleman. You would buy that concert ticket maybe from uh, from a, from an NFT marketplace, and you can't fraud those. Yeah, basically, I think that was in, I think that was implemented as well. It was like already an album. Minted as an NFT, uh, certain DAOs are using NFTs as a as a vote. So you have the NFT, you can vote in the DAO, and many many other things. Yeah, I also heard. Uh, I don't know if you guys heard about uh, the, the Wu Tang uh, album. So there was this uh, uh, the Wu Tang Clan. It was a, a hip hop group in uh, New York. Uh, in the 90s, I think most of you have, uh, have heard of them. Yes. But they definitely. actually recorded mm -hmm. uh, a whole album which they never released and only had one copy of. And somebody bought that album and NFT'd it. Yeah, that's basically... I, I remember that. That's basically what I was thinking about with the, the homes and everything. In a, in a virtual... Not in a virtual setting, but in a augmented reality setting to where um, say, for example, like my house that I have now, um, I actually take that and I tokenize it um, into an NFT. And instead of me going to a place like Zillow to actually market my home, I would actually go on to one of these blockchain sites that allows me to do that. And people can actually virtual tour my home because I would actually have it set up so that way people can actually virtual tour it. And they can purchase the home there. They would actually get a good glimpse of that home in the virtual setting, but it would be an actual real item that they can go purchase. Oh, wow. That would be so cool. That would be so cool. I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood your question. I thought you were talking about like digital houses, but yeah, that would be so cool if you could do that. Hey, so I just wanted to recognize, say thanks to Club 1BCH, Paul for joining, Dinopons for joining as speakers. Uh, if you guys, you know, want to raise any topic, feel free. Also, I see Axie BCH has joined us and you are more than welcome to, uh, speak and, uh, let us know how your project's going. So much stuff happening on smart BCH. It is such an opportunity here. I mean, this, the, the fees are much lower than Ethereum. It's decentralized, unlike Binance Smart Chain. Um, and pretty soon, thanks to the tokenbridge.cash project, which um, uh, Yumiko, Josh, uh, Elithorpe, Shumari Prince, Chris Troutner, uh, Kui Wang, um, sorry, <laughs> Wang Kui, and myself and others are uh, working on that's expected to launch within about a week or so. Uh, that's going to connect Smart BCH to uh, ETH and uh, Binance Smart Chain. So we're going to be able to have... Um, Assets from those other chains uh, traded on uh, Smart BCH DEXs. So there's so much, so much great stuff happening with Smart BCH. Yes, congrats on, uh, on launching the bridge. Thanks. Well, we haven't launched it yet, but uh, yeah, Shamari, Josh, and the others are, are working uh, super, super hard. Uh, Shamari has been doing like a deep uh, code review and uh, Shamari and Josh are setting up a uh, test net uh, Libertarian 0x0 zero zero is working on docs uh, and uh, I did an interview with um, Yumiko that's available in English and uh, Chinese being distributed to the Chinese BCH community now so uh, yeah it's good stuff good stuff Anybody want to jump in? Anybody have anything to, to share or questions to ask? Yeah, so uh, I just, I actually just spent the last 10 minutes chasing my cat. She caught a mouse. But um, I thought, I think, I think the, uh, the future of NFTs is really interesting. The idea that um, I think it was extra crypto of how, you know, um, 
having like virtual tours in, of your house through augmented reality. I thought that idea was really cool because um, I do real estate in New York. And I, I think it's it would be extremely awesome if you could like unlock doors or something like or let people inside a home without actually physically going to the spot. You know, in New York, there's like no parking and stuff. Something like that in the future would be really cool for NFTs. Um, really excited for for stuff like that in the future. Um, also, I think the idea of having like um, NFT games where you have like maybe you know uh, you cats or law punks, for instance, and you ha- can walk around as your virtual um, your NFT, your avatar, whatever it is. I think um, NFTs have a long way to go, and. S- honestly as the sky's the limit like whatever you can imagine um i think a lot can be done yeah i agree with blake here one hundred percent yeah um and so yeah emmanuel uh from epch uh south sudan has joined us as a speaker welcome hey emmanuel Hey, everyone. Good to be here. Hey, man. How are you? I'm very well, not bad. And good to good to hear all this nice conversation going on here. Yeah. It's good to yeah. Have you. You're yeah. doing really good things over there. Yeah, yeah. so, Emma, well, have you thought about... Um, you know, how EP, EPCH might issue like a token on Smart BCH or maybe some N- NFTs that might help fund you your activities? Yeah, um, actually, that is one of the, um, an idea that uh, we were thinking about it of late uh, with a lot of this new development on the, with the Smart BCH. So we're thinking of uh, developing some, some uh, NFTs and also uh, want to have a token that we will be also to uh, able to issue it up um it's still in the planning and we, we I, I had shared like with uh with uh, some of the uh, volunteers here and who were just brainstorming and uh on like what this token could do and what will it be even and how we call it all the Yeah, I mean, there are a bunch of options, right? I mean, right now, I think most tokens are, maybe not most, but there are some that are quite simple, you know, like the BCH Argentina or Knuth tokens. But there are other tokens like um, like MIST, right, that you can do a lot with. You can uh, do liquidity, you can uh, stake. What about in the uh, community here to to assist, like we will uh, awareness or in case we started. Cool, cool. Okay, well, um, unless somebody else wants to jump in, um, I think yeah, we've had a really good conversation today. I uh, really want to thank uh, Fuego, uh, Purely Peer, Club 1BCH, Extra Crypto, Dinoponds, Bcashy, uh, and everybody who's attended. Um, I can't stress it enough, Smart BCH has such a bright future. There's so many projects coming up. Um, you know, I'm working on some plans to market it uh, more, and I know other people with you know, skills and resources way beyond mine are also hatching some plans so I think now is really the time to start thinking about what you're going to build on Smart PCH. You know, um, you know what, what could, what maybe you could issue a token for your local community. You know, and and airdrop it to them uh, and onboard them uh, to Bitcoin Cash. Uh, you know, maybe you could start thinking about an NFT collection that is uh, relevant to your local community or relevant to your country to your region, or maybe it's uh, photographs or your own art or something. So, um, yeah, so any final words? All right, then, I think we'll we'll wrap this up. Uh, thanks again, everybody. Thanks, Purely Peer, uh, Fuego, Thank and uh, 
Yeah, and let's keep building Bitcoin Cash.